Welcome to Imperfect Parenting Podcast. Where We're back. We are. And I w- I re-listened to the last episode with Seth. I was laughing. Oh, my gosh. I'm laughing at the things that we talked about. Such a brother. I love that guy. I, the things that we shouldn't have talked about. Your vasectomy? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I went there. He did. His timing was way off. I, no, no, we don't have any surprise kids. But there we go. But I had two. Yeah. Oh, you missed goodness. the last episode. I guess I just call you up. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about. We're talking about sex with our just kind of the topic. All those things. And all that comes with sex and <laughs> sex. all the things. So it is different talking about it with you in the room than Seth because I have sex with you. So anyways. <laughs> I trying to figure out if I should respond to that or not. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's happy just, married. Happily married. <laughs> happily um, married. Which brings us to this meme. I think it's connected somewhat. It's yeah. Because I actually love this meme mm-hmm. because of our son. Yeah. So uh, that's all I can think about is <laughs> our son with this meme. So again, go check this one out. Mm. But it starts out with girls. I must find a toilet. I need to go pee. Mm-hmm. That's what we say. Skip down to the bottom of the meme. It says boys, and it's one of the characters from Kung Fu Panda. It's like uh, the Tai Long, I think is his name. Yes, he's a bad, the bad guy, jaguary tiger <laughs> thing. But he's holding his fist up in the air and says, "Aha, a tree." Boys will go find a tree. Girls have to yeah. scurry to trying to find a toilet. Uh-huh. And our son, the reason I love this, is he will. will we live the, on five acres. We live on five acres. He'll be in the kitchen. Yep. He'll say, I have to go pee. Yeah. So he'll leave, walk, walk past the bathroom. The two bathrooms that are downstairs. Yeah, at least. And go outside and pee on a bush or a tree. Uh-huh. And I love this about him. Every single time. The other day, he came down the stairs, and I was in the front living room, and he gave me a hug. It was in the morning. And then he opened the front door, and he went outside, and I could see him because of where I was sitting, and I'm like, what is he doing? And then he, ha- I'm like, oh, it's his pee posture. Mm-hmm. He's peeing on the grass like the dog does. Okay, whatever. That's I don't I don't know how long this lasts because we only have one boy and he's the first one. So I'm I am hoping that at some point we stop peeing outside to at least where people can see it. <laughs> You're laughing because are you do you pee outside all the time? Is this what's happening? I I check first. <laughs> <laughs> so it's never gonna it's it never, never gonna stops. go okay. you just get better get more discreet oh okay I right you act surprised you knew that <laughs> <laughs> maybe you have the frequency with your peeing outside we already talked about my vasectomy so whatever <laughs> I just think <laughs> right, Lincoln's gonna pee outside forever he's just gonna go look for a tree I hope he lives in the woods because I don't think it'll work out I in the city I hope he lives in the woods because <laughs> <laughs> if he lives in the city and does it he has had a few times where he's a little confused and he'd walk out in like a neighborhood, and go pee in the front. You're like, buddy, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's when he was really this little. Is not, this is not like a, yeah, he was little. He was really little. This is not a pee in the front yard size property. Yeah. Anyways, okay. Well, there we go. That's the meme. We talked a lot about that I one. don't remember the girls peeing outside. Maybe like when they were really little in their swimsuits, but <laughs> they stopped. Do you, do you still pee outside? N- when I'm backpacking and I have to, <laughs> and there is no toilet, other than that, finding a toilet. Uh, okay. This, right. the, so we're trying to talk about sex, but we're just talking about penises and vaginas in some sense. So I do think it's funny. We say we don't say pee pee or we don't have a bunch of made up words mm-hmm. for them. Do we call them what it is? But I. What I think is really funny is um, because we have this conversation a little bit more in our house and we we talk about sex or whatever that's around sex down to your parts. Lincoln, not very long ago, had a Lego set that he got. Mm-hmm. This is all about Lincoln. And he walks out and he's showing me this Lego. And I'm like, oh, what is that? Is that a really hard Lego? Is that because he's he got this really big X wing or something like that he was putting together, and I'm looking at it and he's just holding it and I'm I'm trying to figure out why there's no words he's just holding it showing me and I I said is it a hard piece to 
to find where it goes or is, is, what, are you, what are you struggling with? You need some help with this? And he's just now starting to snicker. And I realize, oh, this Lego looks like a penis and balls. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, it looks like a penis. And then he just lost it. He thought it was so funny. And you two, I think it's kind of funny that relationship that's kind of developed and I don't think there's nothing bad with it at all. I love it actually that you you guys have your little like looks that you'll give every now and then and I know that it's some kind of boy reference mm-hmm. to your parts and yeah and and I think I mean that's true that does happen we probably snicker sometimes and but the you know the the shame sometimes around even our our private so our penises and vaginas and you know, there's this. I, I think we ne- we're meant to be discreet because Adam and Eve asked us to wear clothes. Mm-hmm. Um, they they required that of us, so keep wearing clothes. But but there's this shame around it sometimes that I think it is often. And that's probably why we're talking about it on this podcast, mm-hmm. and why you and Seth and even probably Derek have done it for years in the past. I don't think Derek and I ever talked about it. No, he, he had little kids back then. He had really little kids. Um, but it, just the. I think shame is often one of the biggest things that stops us from having this conversation with our kids and mm-hmm. and removing some of the barrier mm-hmm. in our homes is there's just so much shame around it. Mm-hmm. And and it just feels so private that we, we don't bring it up ever. And we've talked about that in that not everybody talks about sex in the same manner in which we do that mm-hmm. we're comfortable with. Yeah. So it's not something that you should go to your friend's house and be like, Hey, guess what I learned about my <laughs> penis today? No, it's no. not. Those are not the conversations we're having, because um, we're communicating to our kids that again, this is not a conversation that is as safe or normal in everybody's home. Though I wish it would be, um, because I, it's needed. Yeah. And and what we're seeing right now, the absence of it is um, the world's just deciding to define their, sex their and sexuality yep. for your family, and it's everywhere. So. All that to say, that's why we like having these conversations and trying to create some courage and um, just some language a- around it and what to do when different things pop up. Um, so today we're kind of jumping into, you know, what do you do when your kids do something that scare you? Yep. And um, and how do you do a good job of, of managing when scary sets in? Because a lot of times we go into this reactionary place because we're afraid and we want to control. And then in that reaction, we send a message that I can't handle something that feels scary or messy. So for our kids, shame sets in and then they're going to hide this thing that you as the parent can't handle if I make a mistake around or if I do something that you're uncomfortable with or if I do something that you think is bad I can't ever show you this mistake in my life. And so I that's where I hate when the devil comes in and just just creates this shameful experience and then convinces our kids to hide this thing of their sexuality or mm-hmm. their struggles with insects or their questions about sex or even things that they've been exposed to in sex. And the devil just does a wonderful job of just saying, oh, they will never have compassion or empathy for you in this struggle. You got to go find it over here. So if we can encourage you to create a different space and culture around these moments, that that's the, the heart between when we're having all these conversations. I think part of that too is is – if we can do a good job as parents, not reacting, but responding and, and walking through the hard things with our, with our kids and leading them back to health and healing when they have a bad day or they something goes wrong or something scares us, it actually sets us up to walk with them when they begin to get in relationships mm-hmm. and they, they begin to explore, you know, what this looks like to to pursue the opposite sex and develop a relationship and see where this goes. And, you know, I, I want to walk with my child and be part of that process. And, you know, Lenny often laughs when she, she went on a date recently. Some boy called and invited her out for a date. And she's laughing at how how connected we are to the whole process. But she's brought us in because mm-hmm. she, she wants us to be a part of it. And she has a high standard for whoever ends up in my life is going to be deeply connected to my family. Mm-hmm. 
And I think that's because we've learned to do a decent, good job. I said decent, good, a good job. <laughs> we've done a good job at, at not reacting in these hard moments. And we've had hard moments with Delaney. Mm -hmm. um, in my book, I talk about um, a really big season, and I've kind of alluded to it in different ways, but you know, to throw it all on the table and if you read chapter nine, you'll see it all in there. Um, you know, Delaney was struggling with her identity, her walk with the Lord. She found herself in this relationship with this boy that obviously had awakened love too early in his life. And so he was leading in a physical track towards this is, this is how we do relationships. And she's like, okay. Again, she was struggling in all these other areas that I can't fix for her, yeah. but I can stay connected to her as best I can. And, and that's what we were doing. And so she ends up in a situation where she's lying to us. She's hiding things from us. And now she's, you know, she's put her body on display for this young man and given him access to it in some measure and, um, you know, did things that she couldn't take back. Thankfully, you know, it was mild on the scale of stuff, but it still was, yep. oh, my gosh, what did you just do? Oh, my gosh, you did what? And then so it was just like this, it was like a, layering session of I thought it was this and mm -hmm. it is this and then it's this and then all of a sudden you know we're in our room crying looking at photos that she sent to this boy and I remember I mean when I recorded the audiobook that line when I say what you said to me that night was you are crying and you said mm -hmm. our little girl and I just am I mean I could cry right now but in the audiobook recording, I, we had to stop and I had to recover from just reliving that painful, terrifying moment as a parent of you have violated all forms of our trust. You have scared us. And I don't even know what to do with all that I feel right now. Are you okay over there? I'm going to be okay. You got me crying on the podcast now. I'm sorry. Crying with no tears coming well, out? Yeah. My, my <laughs> eyes are watery, which that, that's crying for Ben. Um, I, I have crying moments. This is th – this counts there. Um, I'm probably holding it back. But as you were talking, I was sitting there also thinking about she got to speak at Valor. Mm -hmm. um, it's quiet because I'm pausing. So I don't cry too much. <laughs> I cry real tears. Um, it's, it's a feeling, okay? <laughs> it's a cry feeling. <laughs> it, get, it gets stronger in my chest. And works We're, way up to my, We're laughing to, to get throat. through this moment, everyone. Um, she gets on stage and she was asked to speak. Mm -hmm. And we, had, we talked to her before she was going to speak for a while that day. And she was speaking with Tia Wood. He was kind of leading that, that session that night. And she talked through a lot of stuff, different labels the world gives us, and really the labels we give ourselves. But she got to the end of her, her whole deal, and she said, I got my innocence back. Mm -hmm. And this is why I'm crying, mm -hmm. because of that line right there, is I think this is, this is the hope as well, is our kids are going to scare us. They're going to make such painful decisions. And sex, for some reason, just feels so painful mm -hmm. and so final. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's something that we're meant to protect and 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 hold to hand to someone one day. At the same time, we serve a God of reconciliation and redemption. Mm -hmm. And so to hear my girl up there, kind of walking through her her process and say, I I got my innocence back at 16, 17 years old, it's like, oh, that's why we're fighting. Mm -hmm. That's what we're fighting for. Is honey, there's you have something to give away, even though you feel like you lost something. Your, your father in heaven and your mom and dad down here are fighting so hard for you to, to live fully restored. And her moment of I got my innocence back is actually her believing that she can be redeemed. Yeah. And, and so much of that part is our partnership and helping her know how to fight for herself um, and not reacting to the really scary everything that was put in front of us that night and everything that 
you know, it was not a one and done moment. It was a journey that we had to walk through and it was daily choices of, I'm going to keep my love on. I'm going to manage me. I'm going to manage my mouth. 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 I mean, that's that was my mantra for a while because the things that she would throw at me, I hate you. You don't understand me. Why can't I have this? You don't love me. You don't want me to ever have a boyfriend. I mean, just extreme opposites to what the truth is. If I get triggered by those moments, I'm going to react to this and I'm not going to have a plan to respond and lead And so this part of sex is that, you know, your kid, you find out your kid's sleeping with their boyfriend or sneaking out of the house or sending photos. And all of a sudden, I want to control everything I possibly can. There are a few things that we do control as parents, Mm -hmm. permission, opportunity, resources. That is true. So we didn't continue seeing this boy. We didn't continue having a phone. We didn't. There's lots of things. Again, if you want all the nitty gritty details, get the book, leave a review. Anyways, (laughs) but... I think what we did was we controlled the things that we can control. And then we let Lainey spin out in our house. Yep. In but we, we we put the barriers up. Like you you freak out all you want in here. And I will manage me as you freak out, do a really bad job of saying I love you because you are losing it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you how to fight for you. It's not control. It's not telling you what to do. It was lots of asking good questions and it was lots of patience and it was lots of managing me in this period of time. And, you know, then we got to have really amazing conversations of, because I didn't lecture her. I didn't, and and for whatever reason, I was the punching bag. You know, I don't know why. Maybe because she's like, mom likes to fight. That's probably it. But I remember finally getting to, you know, having real conversations. It, it feels good to be desirable. Mm-hmm. It, it's, you're supposed to. Yeah. And so we got to then say, these feelings that you're having are not the problem. Yes. This need that you have that you want to have expressed, God actually gave us. Yes. There's just a time and place and, and, Is this the right time and place? Is this the right boy? You know, I used you as an example over and over again. How is this boy like daddy? Mm -hmm. How does this boy protect you like daddy protects me? How does he, you know, so we then, you know, we had lots of conversation, but we didn't go into a panic and punishment. And I think that's uh, a lot of times in the reaction spot, we punish. Because we're so afraid. Yeah. Hey, it's Brittany here. I'm normally on the Kylo Show, yes, but I wrote a book. I wrote a book for parents, but I talk a lot about moms. So if you're listening to this and you're a mom who's frustrated, who feels like you're failing, who feels hopeless in this game of parenting that we're in. So if that's you, mom... Buy yourself this gift on Mother's Day. It's going to be worth it. So I hope that you feel blessed and encouraged by my new book, Imperfect Parenting. You can find it at imperfectparenting.co. We often talk about how the culture of your home flows from the culture of your marriage Mm -hmm. as well. And it's it's the same in this conversation we're having is I think if, if intimacy is struggling, in the marriage, if we're having a hard time with this conversation, even within the marriage, it's it's going to flow down and it's going to make it harder. Um, it doesn't mean marriage doesn't get hard at times. We don't have struggles. It just means that it might be a flag to pay attention to something inside the marriage first mm-hmm. or as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, get some help. Ask for some help. Re-keep your love on. <laughs> I mean, what whatever you got to do, keep growing as a couple so we can keep bringing you along this journey and 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 bring our strength to you rather than our pain. Mm-hmm. The, that thing of intimacy, like if you want intimacy to thrive in your home, it needs to thrive in your marriage, you know, or, or needs to thrive somewhere where it's on display, mm-hmm. your intimacy with the father. Sure. Uh, but uh, the design is that a man and woman are married and they get to put on display how we value and protect intimacy. 
which then we get to do that with our kids. And, and that's how we teach them to fight is that there's something so valuable that we don't want to just give away to anybody and that we're going to work so hard to protect and, and that this, this is a gift. And so by having conversations, by asking hard questions, by having a plan for when our kid is an idiot, okay, I'm going to lead you. I'm going to manage myself. And that's, that was the hardest thing in all of what happened with Delaney was walking through I'm going to keep leading here mm-hmm. because if I stop leading and I get caught up in my pain, then I, I can't do a good job because I can't actually see where I'm trying to, to help her get to. Yeah. And that's, that's my job. You know, I, was, I pretty much so much of my life came to a halt and the priority of, all right, Delaney, what, it, what can I do? to help you be successful. What do I control? What is, I don't want to overstep. I'm not going to punish. I, okay, can we expedite this? Can it go faster than it is? Nope. Okay. You're going to take your sweet time. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Can I have patience? And a lot of this is leaning into community. A lot of, a lot of this is asking for help. You know, I love working with parents that want help and have a problem and are ready to lean in and manage themselves. I don't want to work with people that want me to tell them, how do I control my kids? I'm not going to, I don't want to do that. But if you want to do a good job of managing yourself and leading your culture, come find me. Let's do this because that's the difference. And, and, um, I, I think in this season for Delaney, especially she didn't, need to know how disappointed I was in her. She didn't need any of that. She knew all Mm -hmm. of that. She needed to remember the truth of how much I love her regardless. That's what she needed the loudest. And, and I think in, when we're in our pain, we sometimes think that we need to convince them of how disappointed or how painful this was more than the truth of how much I love you and I'm not going anywhere. I'm holding on. Yeah, it's just such an important piece, I think. And uh, I, I was reading this morning. I don't go there very often, but in Songs of Solomon. I'm actually thinking about this topic a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but but where it got me to, actually, that's it's probably, probably not what you think. <laughs> um, but I was just thinking about, you know, our, our relationship in marriage in um, as, as a young child progresses towards finding a mate and a and uh, begin to practice sex and, 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 and all the things this, this conversation alludes to. I, I think the thing I was thinking about with, with Songs of Solomon, you know, this love letter, is really it's just practice for our, our relationship with the Lord. It's just learning how to actually open my heart to deep intimacy. And, and that's the thing I want my kids to catch is, you know, the, the, the desire to be desired, the, all the things happening inside of you is normal. Put there by God. Mm-hmm. And it's meant to lead to an intimate relationship with someone one day. There's is, this is other side as well, which is really the main thing. And the most important thing is that I'm learning how to have intimate relationships with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And so I just I was just thinking through that that contrast and and really God's design is he, he's, he's given us this beautiful opportunity on earth that lead, leads to eternity. Mm-hmm. So how do we help our kids fight for this? That was like, a little preachy. Uh, that's great. There we go. No, I I loved it. I think we've been preachy, so <laughs> and cry and cry. That wasn't in the notes. Mm-mm. Um, yeah, I I I think the first thing is parents go go tend to your heart if you have to. Go check in on your own marriage, your own heart. How you doing? And then don't don't react. I think your response, like like Brittany's saying, the. Delaney didn't need to know how much we disappointed. She needed to know how much we loved her. That's actually actually giving her strength to fight with us by her side rather than fighting against us because the last thing she wants to hear is what I'm already pretty sure of is you're upset, you're mad, you're hurt, you're scared. Mm-hmm. If she gets to hear that the message through all that, it cuts right through that, that you're, you love me, you're with me, you're not going anywhere. It actually gives them strength to go, okay, if you won't let go, Maybe I'll hold hold a little bit tighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, fighting 
for your kids in this area is the being courageous enough to have the conversations. Yeah. And um, the sooner you can start having them, you know, in whatever form it might take, you know, if the first boys somebody likes or first girl somebody likes, is, why do you like them? What does that mean? And then is that, you know, being able to have this conversation to where they feel safe and it's normal. We had those with Delaney, which is why I think um, even though she was not doing well, it wasn't a new conversation. Mm -hmm. It just was new because she had violated so much yeah. um, and broke our hearts. But it wasn't that we've never talked about this before. So we got there pretty quick um, in the scheme of things. I think it was like three months or something, like the longest three months of my life, but it was. Uh, but the willingness to have these conversations, the willingness to – you know, not be afraid to talk about this stuff. And, you know, if, if you're feeling nervous, I would just lean in and ask some questions and then say, can we continue having this kind of conversation? Can I ask you different questions about what you know about sex or what you feel like you're looking for when you see that boy at the playground? You know, what what's something that you want? I mean, again, we're just start doing something mm -hmm. and... um and there's lots of great resources out there on, on, on even how to start a conversation and have a conversation and what to think about. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll get into some of the things that we did, mm -hmm. um, different ages in a little bit. But, yeah, I, I think part of how to help your kids fight is um, telling them what they're fighting for. Yeah. The whole idea of covenant, um, that's always where we really leaned into and um, put on display because we've done a really good job in our marriage of protecting this, that this this is the same level of covenant that they see mom and dad have, we want you to have. Yeah. What does that look like? What do you see that we have? What do you see that we're protecting? And, and so break that down, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're doing a good job here. If you're not, then maybe you can also come see us because we help with marriage stuff. But yeah, all that. Beautiful. Okay. Well, another conversation around sex. There we go. We'll just keep going. More to come. Uh-huh. See you next time. Bye.